What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to find lengths in 45, 45, 90 triangles and 30, 60, 90 triangles, all right? So basically special types of right triangles. So let's start with these 45, 45, 90 triangles. So as you can see, we have a couple missing sides right here, right? The hypotenuse and one of the legs. Okay, but we are given that this length of this leg is nine. So in a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, the two shorter legs are always equal to each other. They're always congruent. So if one leg is equal to nine, the other leg is also equal to nine. And the hypotenuse on a 45, 45, 90 is just the length of a leg times root two. So here, the length of this hypotenuse would be the length of a side, so nine, times root two, right? So times the square root of two. All right, here's the next example. So we just rotated the triangle this time. As you can see, it's still 45, 45, 90. And we don't know the hypotenuse or this leg up here. But we do know this leg over here, right? It's 2 root 2. So again, remember, in this type of triangle, the two legs are the exact same. So if this is 2 root 2, that means this leg is also 2 root 2. Now, the hypotenuse, again, is equal to one of the sides times root two, okay? So let me just write it out. The hypotenuse is equal to one of the sides times root two. So the hypotenuse in this case is gonna be equal to one of the sides and what's one of the sides? Two root two, right? So two root two times root two, okay? Now, the nice thing that we can do here is combine the two radicals. So the square root of two times the square root of two, this portion right here, is equal to simply two, all right? And then we're still multiplying by this two out here. So we basically get two times two, and that's equal to four, all right? So the hypotenuse is equal to four. And just in case you're wondering how these uh, root twos multiply together, well, you can think of perfect squares to make it a little bit easier. So what if we had something like the square root of nine times the square root of nine? So here I'm saying this is equal to just nine right? And you can obviously check it, right? What's the square root of 9? Well, it's equal to 3. So here we really have 3 times 3, which again is simply equal to 9, okay? So that's why, again, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is equal to simply 2. <sighs> All right, here is the next example. So again, we're just rotating this a little bit, and this time we're given the hypotenuse, right, 6, and we have to figure out what the two legs are. So again, we can use the little formula that the hypotenuse is equal to one of the sides times root two, okay? In this case, we don't know what either of the sides are, but we do know what the hypotenuse is, right? It's equal to six. So here we can say that six is equal to one of the sides times root two, all right? So to solve for one of the sides over here, we can just get rid of this square root of two by dividing both sides by the square root of two. So then on this side, the square root of two on the top and the bottom cancel out. So then here we're just left with that the side, one of the sides, is equal to six over the square root of two. And I'm gonna flip this a little bit just so we can work something out. So I'm gonna say that the side again is just equal to six over the square root of two. Now here we have a little bit of a problem because we can't have a square root, we can't have a radical in the denominator, all right? So in order to get rid of that bad boy, we just have to rationalize the denominator, all right? And all that means is we have to multiply this square root on the top and the bottom, okay? So we need to multiply by the square root of two on the top and on the bottom, okay? So to multiply two fractions, we just multiply straight across, right? So on top, we get six times root two, right? So six times root two. And on the bottom, again, square root of two times the square root of two is equal to simply two, all right? Now here we have six over two, and we can actually reduce that down to three over one. Okay, so then this is gonna be equal to three root two over one. But since we just have a one in the denominator, we don't really have to write it, right? So we could just leave it as three root two, all right? So one of the sides is equal to three root two. But again, if one of the sides is equal to root two, that means the other side, right? The other short leg is equal to three root two. Boom. All right, now let's move on to 30, 60, 90 triangles. 
So 30, 60, 90 triangles, as you can see right here, right? 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, also have special proportions that we can use to solve for all three sides. So the easiest way to do this is by finding the shortest side first, if possible. So if you find the shortest side, it's kind of easy to find the hypotenuse and the long leg, okay? Because the hypotenuse is just going to be two times the short side, or in other words, it's twice the size, right? It's twice the length as the short side. And the long leg is going to be that short side times the square root of three, okay? So we have an example set up right here. As you can see, the shortest side is labeled as 12, right? So that means the hypotenuse is going to be double this number. So the hypotenuse is going to be 24. And then the long leg is going to be this short side, so 12, times the square root of 3. Okay, so again, that's how we can relate all three sides. All right, here is our next example. So as you can see, we have our 30, 60, 90 triangle right here. And here we know the hypotenuse, which is 40. So we're trying to find the short leg and the long leg. So again, we want to try and find the short leg because then it'll make it easier to find the two other sides. So here we don't know what the short leg is, but we do know that the hypotenuse, the longest side, is 40. So remember, the short leg is half the size of the hypotenuse. So if the hypotenuse is equal to 40, that means the short leg is equal to 20. Okay, and then the long leg, that's the weird one, that's the one that has the root 3 on it. Okay, so if we know the short leg is equal to 20, that means the long leg is going to be equal to 20 root 3. All right, here's the next one we're going to try. So again, we have our 30, 60, 90. And again, we have the hypotenuse labeled, but it's labeled as a weird number. It's labeled as 2 root 3, okay? But again, we want to try and find the short leg because, again, that way we can find what the long leg is here, okay? So in order to use the hypotenuse, we can, again, relate it to the short leg, right? Because, again, since we know what the hypotenuse is equal to, we know that the hypotenuse is equal to 2 times the short leg, okay? Now, in this example, the hypotenuse is equal to 2 root 3. So we're going to say 2 root 3 is equal to 2 times the short leg. So to solve for the short leg over here, we just need to get rid of this 2 by dividing both sides by 2. Those cancel out. And on this side, the 2s also cancel out, okay? So then on top over here, we're just left with the short leg is equal to the square root of 3, right? So then we know that the short leg right here is equal to the square root of 3. Okay, cool. So now that we know the short leg, in order to find the long leg, just remember the long leg, again, is equal to the short leg times root 3. Okay, now in this case, the short leg is equal to the square root of 3. So here we can say that the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is equal to simply three, all right? So then the long leg over here is equal to just three. All right, here is our next 30, 60, 90 problem. So this time we're given the long leg, right? So this is the long leg, down here is the hypotenuse, right? Because it's opposite of the right angle, and then our short leg is over here. So this time, again, we're given the long leg. So what do we know about the long leg? Well, we know that the long leg is equal to the short leg times root 3. Okay, so here, if we're saying that 9 root 3 is equal to s root 3, well, to solve for s, we can see that s must be equal to 9, right? Because if this is 9 root 3, well, then this side must be 9 root 3, right? s must be equal to 9, okay? So if we know that s is equal to 9, the short leg is equal to 9, then again, we can label this guy right here, the short leg, as simply 9. Okay, and again, in order to find the hypotenuse, that's just going to be twice the length of the short leg. So down here, we would have 18. Ooh, that was a little easier than we thought, wasn't it? So we're just going to do one more problem. All right, here's the last problem. And as you can see, it's pretty similar to the last one. So our 30, 60, 90 triangle. Again, we're given the long leg length. Yeah, that's not hard to say. And it's labeled as so again, what do we know about the long leg? Well, we know that the long leg is equal to the short leg times root 3, right? So the long leg is equal to the short leg times root 3. Now, as you can see with this equation, it's not going to be as easy to see what s is equal to, right? So we're actually going to have to solve for s. 
So let's solve this equation. Let's just solve it out here to the side. So we have that 5 is equal to s times the square root of 3. So to solve for s, right, the short leg, uh, we need to get rid of the square, root, the square root of 3. And to do that, we just divide both sides by the square root of 3, like that. All right, on this side, they cancel out. And on this side, we're left with 5 over the square root of 3 is equal to just s. And again, I'm going to flip this because we're going to need some extra space because, as you can see, we have a radical in the denominator again. Right? So s is equal to 5 over the square root of 3. Again, we can't have a square root in the dot denominator, so we need to rationalize it. So again, that means we have to multiply by the square root of 3 on the top and on the bottom. All right. Now, just multiplying straight across, on top we get 5 root 3, and on the bottom we get uh, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is equal to just 3. All right. So we get just a 3 right there. So we can't simplify this anymore, so that's what's going to be our short side right here. So again, the short side is going to be equal to this ugly looking number right here. So 5 root 3 over 3. Okay, now in order to find the hypotenuse, again, we just have to multiply this number by 2, right, just to double it. So we're going to say 2 times 5 root 3 over 3. And again, we're just multiplying straight across, we can multiply the 2 and the 5 together, so that's equal to 10. So we get 10 root 3 over 3, all right? So then that would be the length of the hypotenuse h right here. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.